I'm Dr. Phyllis King. I'm the interim dean here in the School of Nursing. And I think I've uh, met, visited with, uh, uh, greeted you before perhaps. And if I haven't, then welcome to the, to the PBA family and to the School of Nursing family. We do really consider ourselves a family and we hope to, to build those connections with you so that you feel like that you're uh, in a place where we're, we're seeking your success we're working towards that. We're going to work with you with to your success um, and trying to facilitate that. And so welcome. And you're getting started uh, in your nursing program. And we're just uh, delighted with that. My word is tickled. I don't know if you've heard that before. I'm very, I'll, I'm very tickled to have you all here. And they tease me about that because I tend to use that a lot. So you'll hear me say that before. I want to introduce this group here uh, for you. Um, yeah, um, We have Dr. Patrick Heyman. Uh, you will be getting to know him in your junior year in Patho Farm. He has a reputation of being um, If we could be totally ironic, that's probably <laughs> okay. And then we have Dr. Jane Wilson. She's the chair of our BSN program, and um, you'll be seeing her. And she teaches OB. Uh, she she teaches intro. Next to her is Dr. Bree Andrusy. She is an alum from the program and she has gone all the way through to her DNP, so she can certainly give you advice if that's, if you're working towards that doctor of nursing practice, we have that program here and how it goes and, and give you good advice on that, so, because she is one of our grads straight through from our BSN. Uh, then we have um, Ms. Uh, Professor Christine Conti is not here. She's out of town on a, a family situation. We have uh, Christine Gagne, and uh, you'll be seeing her in um, health assessment this next spring. Um, we have, uh, and she'll, she also teaches our PEDS courses later on in your senior year, so you'll be seeing her there. We have... Um, Nancy Piper, who is our coordinator of the undergrad program for advising. And so you'll be uh, seeing her for registration and those things. Um, we have Taylor Bartz, and she is our coordinator in the undergrad program for our clinical placements. And so she'll be working with you, uh, getting you ready with all those shots and all of that stuff. You, you, may, have already gotten, you may have already gotten an email from her um, going forward. Back in the back we have um, Natalie Chaser who is our admissions coordinator and you probably have already met her at, or seen her at somewhere. Kathy Stauffer and she's also uh, uh, an advisor for uh, newly admitted students so you may have already seen her name and met with her or worked with her. Um, uh, I am not good with names. So she's Allie. Good. Allie. This is Allie. Allie is representing um, uh, nursing in the School of Nursing and going to talk to you about some things of, of being a student here, I believe, right? Yeah, okay. Oh, Daniel. Okay. <laughs> we have Daniel here, too. So we are, I'm going to turn this mic over to some other people here to tell you more specific things that you need to know and also welcome you here. So I am turning it over to... All right, so my name is Dr. Heyman, and just wanted to say welcome to the School of Nursing. Seems like just yesterday I was in this very room with some of you when you were here before you started classes as freshmen in that kind of FYE pre-day. And then I had some of you in FYE, and now all of a sudden it's like yesterday you're that, and today you're about to start. And for some of you, I've never met you before, but we will meet soon. So, um, you probably have heard that we've changed our curriculum in the School of Nursing a little bit. So it used to be that I, you would take my course, Patho Farm 1, very first thing, but you guys are actually going to take that in next semester in the fall. In the spring, you guys are going to be doing Intro to Nursing, if you haven't taken it already, and Health Assessment and Fundamentals of Nursing Theory and Clinical. 
So it's going to be a little bit different for you guys than it has been in the past. Um, and so it's going to be very, very exciting. We think that it's going to be a much better change. And you guys will enjoy it a little bit better. And we'll also make it a little bit, I don't want to use the word easy, because it's not going to be easy. But it will be easier than it has been in the past. So all of that is very exciting. And we're going to introduce you to some of the faculty who are going to be teaching you in the spring. So first up, we have... Dr. Wilson, who is also now the chair of the undergraduate BSN program. Yay, you hoo Well, first of all, hello again. Wow, I'm so happy to see you all here. We have such a great turnout and so many wonderful faces, and I can't wait to get to meet and get to know each of you personally. Um, I do teach OB. That's my passion. I love. I've been a nurse for 31 years, and OB is probably the best class that you're going to take your whole time that you're here. <laughs> so, and Pete's, Pete's OB. Got to do the two. So, um, yeah, look forward to that in your senior year but until then um, starting off you'll be doing intro to nursing which is very exciting class it's really neat to be able to start into your nursing classes we're going to talk about all things nursing you know what kind of nursing is available for you? What makes a good nurse? What about the legal and ethical issues of nursing? Talking about nursing history, nursing theory, everything nurse related you're gonna start learning about in um, intro to professional nursing. You may find that it's not exactly what you thought it would be. And that's another good thing for you to know. So it's a good um, class for you to start off and uh, understand what the profession is that you're going to be stepping into. Um, my tidbits for this class on how to be successful, it is, um, it's a hybrid class. Has anybody ever taken hybrid classes in here before? If you haven't, um, you need to understand that you need to be organized. Okay, so there, and it's a subterm class, meaning that it's not, it's only eight weeks, not 15, 16 weeks, okay? So what that means for you is that it is um, very quick paced. You're not getting half of a class. You're getting the full three credits, full work in half the time. And some of that is on your own. So you need to be organized, you need to be motiva motivated, and you need to turn in your work on time. So that is one thing that you really should know from the be beginning of the class. It's busy, there's assignments they need to do, there's presentations. One really exciting thing for some of you in Intro to Nursing right now is that we are launching a service learning project this year. And we're going to be working in the field with boys and girls at the Boys and Girls Club. So we're going to be doing health teachings. We're going to be doing, and we're going to work on it together with the community partners. And we're going to find out what it is these these little boys and girls need right now. And then we can um, help formulate how we can meet those needs and do um, special presentations for them. So that's kind of an exciting thing that's happened for the first time this year, and we're trialing that out to see how it goes. So I think that's a great opportunity to do for you to learn about health, learn about health teaching. You'll have your quote unquote first patients before you even get into your clinical setting. So it's kind of be exciting for you. Um, so those are the those are the things you should know. I'm going to put a lot of like the tentative schedule and the and the syllabus on my PBA under freshmen. I'll, I'll kind of email. Look for an email from me, and we'll s tell you how to get there if you don't already know how to do that, so that you can kind of arrange your schedule, see when classes are, see when classes are not, and what the assignments are, and get the book and all that kind of stuff. Any questions for intro? No. All right. Look forward to seeing you. Hey guys, welcome. I'm Dr. Andrusy, and like Dr. Hammond said, I was a student here. I did my DNP as well. That used to be my seat, and he used to be my professor. He actually taught me how to dance as well, right? The day before my wedding, <laughs> practice right here. Um, but yeah, so I've pretty much been raised by PBA. I'm really excited to see you guys. I'm excited to have you next semester. So I'm going to be teaching fundamentals with Professor Conti. Unfortunately, she sh couldn't be here today. Um, family emergency, but uh, you're going to love her as well. If you don't already know her, um, you're going to really enjoy uh, just her as a professor. So next semester, like Dr. Heyman said, it's going to be a little bit different. Right now we have two courses, the fundamentals, tech skills. It's going to be one for you guys. 
Not that it's going to be easier, but I think it's going to flow a little bit better. And I would say the best thing you can do to prepare, look for um, the resources that we give you online. Uh, when we get that syllabus out for you, you know, make sure you buy the course point, the full course point, um, because there's going to be a lot of resources that you guys can access and use for the course. So this is going to be your first clinical course. So you're going to actually be seeing patients this semester, which is really exciting. Um, and we're going to be there every step of the way to help you guys. You're going to have great faculty, adjunct faculty as well, in these clinical sites. And that's pretty much what I have for you guys. Do you have any questions? OK, health assessment. And you're going to see patients, but you're not going to see them right away. We're going to get you well prepared first, right? The first half of the semester you're going to spend um, in the lab. So not day one, we're shipping you off. But you're going to spend the first half of the semester in the lab working with them to get you ready for that the second half of the semester. Um, however, that's not what I'm teaching. I'm teaching health assessment, like they said. I'm Professor Kristen Gagne. Um, it's my third year here. I teach pediatrics in the fall, and it's my third year here teaching health assessment in the spring. So um, I love pediatrics, but I also really love health assessment. Um, we have a lot of fun in health assessment. Uh, it's also um, a very important class because if you don't know how to assess a patient, you can't go any further in the program to make any further decisions for your patient if you don't know how to first do a physical exam, right? So um, it's important and it's a fun class for you guys, I think, because I think it's one of the first times maybe in your college career you get out of your seat and start doing instead of just sitting and learning from the textbook way. You know, we uh, assess each other, so um, you will be playing the role of the assessor and the nurse, and you'll also be playing the role of the patient for your peers. So we have a lot of fun, but it's also a very valuable class. Um, like a lot of the classes you'll take here in the nursing program, it is a hybrid course as well. So you'll get theory online, and then your lab time is when you actually see myself, or there are going to be at least one additional professor teaching health assessment this spring that you'll see us for the lab portion. So the expectation is that you do the theory portion in advance so that when you come to the lab, you actually know why you're doing what you're doing and what you're practicing. Um, you should be getting some information about getting a stethoscope and a pen light for health assessment. Those are the two things that you'll need in addition to the book material. And I think that's about it. Anything else? Questions for health assessment? They'll come up along the way. All right. I just wanted to reiterate um, that health assessment and fundamentals are actually hybrid classes. So health assessment used to be scheduled two hours of class and then three hours of lab. You're going to have three hours of lab and approximately two hours of online learning. So a lot of you are going to try to pretend like it's just a three-hour lab and that's it. And when you pr try to pretend that, you will fail. So don't do that. Or some of you will wake up at about midterm and you'll go, oh, wait, there's, yes. So make sure you do the online portion for that class. And then also fundamentals is a four credit class, but you guys are only going to be meeting for three hours. So make sure you do the online work for that as well. If you don't, you're going to have problems compared to the people who do the, what they're supposed to be doing. Um, so we've got couple students here to talk about their experiences in the course and how they study. Um, now, remember that they're going to be a little bit different than you because they had a different course sequence, but they'll still be able to tell you what kind of how it works. They're currently taking fundamentals of nursing right now, so they can tell you a lot about that particular experience. Um, one other thing to keep in mind is that you guys will not have as much vocabulary going into fundamentals because, well, you haven't had health assessment and patho yet. Um, so they had a little bit of an advantage over you in terms of they had already had a whole semester of just medical terminology and vocabulary. We do build that into the courses now, but just be aware that some of the things they say might not make as much sense just because of that little bit of background. Um, so we have Allison Smith, who was a PBA freshman and is a volleyball player. And then we also have Daniel Rosales, who is a, um, well, first of all, he's a male student, and he's also a transfer student. So we try and cover as many different backgrounds as we can for our students. Um, so what was it like to do the nursing program? Um, so like the program okay. Okay, so first off, what it's like to be in the nursing program, it's awesome. I mean, you guys are getting 
I think, one of the greatest educations in the state for nursing, and it's also Christian-based, which is, you know, something that you don't see um, a whole lot, and the staff is there for you 24-7. You know, if you're struggling, don't be afraid to go into their office and talk to them. Even if it's about personal stuff, they're there all the time, and they're willing to work with you, and they understand that you're human, and we fail, but their whole thing is that they want you to learn from those failures. So um, they're awesome. And being a student athlete, <laughs> I'm not gonna lie to you guys, it's really, really hard. Even just being a student in the nursing program is so, so hard. And you guys are gonna run into some mental breakdowns, but that's okay. <laughs> um, I run into them a lot, but you guys just really, and this is a lesson that I am struggling to learn right now. You guys really have to find time for your rest. You have to get your sleep. You have to find time to decompress or else you will lose your mind. So, um, but you guys are gonna do great. Everyone makes it through, you know? And um, so don't stress out too, too much at least try not to. Um, and then how I study. It's different for every class. So you guys have to find what works best for you in that specific class. For example, in patho, um, I took patho one last semester, which you guys will not be doing, um, but and then patho two this semester. So I use all of the resources that Dr. Hammond gives to you. He's gonna give you a lot of resources. He's gonna lecture in class. He's gonna upload voice threads. He's gonna upload podcasts. He's gonna upload videos of his lectures. So, and I use, mainly all of them. I will listen to his voice thread before class. Know what you're coming into before class starts. So then when he talks about it, you're like, oh, okay, I remember that. Um, and I take notes on it. I take notes in class. And then after I have all that information, I make pretty study notes so I can grab my information easily. Um, for fundamentals, course point is very expensive, but buy it. You need it. If you don't get it, you will fail. Um, and uh, what's really nice about fundamentals is that course point gives you a lot of practice question resources and those are really, really, really helpful. So make sure you're utilizing that. Like that's how I basically study for the exams. I'll look over my notes, but after that, it's basically just practice questions. Um, health assessment is really fun. You guys are really gonna enjoy it. I loved it. That one, just make sure you know the vocab. You'll be fine. Um, yeah, it's good. Nursing school is good. <laughs> so just a quick point on Course Point. So Course Point is uh, an electronic resource that is part of the textbook. So if you look at the text, the syllabus for the course, and you see, oh, textbook is whatever. I'm going to buy it used on Amazon. That's fine. You can buy it used on Amazon, but that won't provide you the Course Point. Um, aspect and you can't pass the course without course point. So rather than going and buying the book twice, which is what ends up happening when you do it that way, don't get it used on Amazon and purchase course, course point. When you purchase the course point, you'll get the, um, the textbook that goes along with it. So I know it's a little bit more expensive to do it that way, but that's really what you need to do in order to be successful. Um, this is um, what it looks like and you can get them. It's basically just a code. Um, so you're buying the code and you can get them in the bookstore. Um, that's the way to do it. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's not in the back. You have to ask for it at the register. You say, hi, I'm a nursing student and I need the course point code and then they'll give it to you. Um, so any questions for Allie? You left them speechless. All right, Daniel, or is it Dani? All right, so where to start? Um, what classes are you taking, by the way? They're gonna take fundamentals, intro, and health assessment. Okay, so health assessment. Health assessment is basically like the foundation of what it is you're gonna be moving, like as, yeah. Projection horse. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so health assessment. That's just Okay, health assessment is basically your foundation. So like all the assessments from day one to like the last day, you're gonna be using it um, throughout the whole semester. So I would say really study, really know your assessments. Um, they're not that hard. I mean, if you put in the work, you should be fine. Um, but yeah, take health assessment serious. Fundies, I've learned the hard way because I'm very lazy. But 
in combination, I do not like reading, but for fundies, you, you need to read. You definitely need to read. And learning that the hard way, now I'm like reading as much as I can, because also with course point, like the practice quizzes and stuff like that, they help out as well. But fundies is no joke. Like, not to scare anyone, but fundies is pretty much just like health assessment, the fundamentals of what it is you, you guys are gonna be doing. Um, and intro, intro. I mean, intro, is, intro nursing is not to like make it seem like it's it's not really a hard class. Again, you do have to study though. Like for me personally, flashcards help, especially for patho. Patho is, oh, and I took patho too over the summer, which was a big mistake. <laughs> yeah, we'll have it up. Oh no, okay, okay, yeah. So you guys are good, but it kind of like burnt me out because it was a lot. Um, patho one flashcards is voice threads. I listened to voice threads like over and over again as many times as I could. Um, so a male perspective of nursing, uh, I would use her advice as well. Like if you guys are failing or, I know we got egos. I know it's like kind of hard to like vent or go out to a professor and try to talk to them. But like, yeah, they help out a lot. Um, they, I'm not sure if they get annoyed or not, but I have yet to experience that, but I mean, that's pretty much it, really. I mean, this, don't take this education lightly, because I transferred from, a, I'm not gonna say where, but comparing like the material, and like, it's, it's, there's no comparison. Like here, it's a lot of information, a lot of details. You're definitely getting like the best ed education, in my opinion. That's pretty much it. So, um, any questions for Danielle? Left him speechless also. All right, so I just want to talk a little bit about some general things. Um, for most of the classes you've taken in college, you're like, humanities one, humanities two, comp, public speaking. You're like, does anyone really care if I know about those English poets? Nah, probably not. Okay, got rid of it. Some of you may even burn your notes at the end of the semester. <laughs> you cannot do that in nursing because everything you do this coming semester is the foundation for your success in the next semester. If you do it right, nursing school should get easier every semester because all you're doing is you're adding a little bit onto what you've already learned. But if you decide that you're gonna forget everything you learn at the end of every semester or after every test, what's gonna happen is that nursing school is gonna get harder and harder for you and you probably won't pass it. So health assessment, and fundamentals are really the most important courses in the whole program because they're going to set you up for success in the next semester. So please take them seriously. Um, don't just cram for tests. I'm, I, your students, obviously, you're going to cram. But don't just cram. You have to keep that information because sometimes it ends up on the next test and on the final exam. But even if it doesn't, it will come back to haunt you in the next semester. And guess what you're gonna be expected to do midway through the semester when you go into the clinicals and you start seeing patients for real? Oh, the assessment. And guess what we're gonna expect you to be able to do on the very first day of Med Surge 1? Oh, an assessment. So you've gotta be able to keep those things and keep those skills. They're not just something you learn because yeah, you know, you need to have a course list so you can graduate. It really is the foundation for your success. Does that make sense? All right, do you guys have any questions for any of us? Um, did we introduce you? We didn't introduce you. All right, do you have anything you want to tell them? Okay, so um, this is Taylor Bartz, and she's going to give you a presentation on that handout you have in front of you. So before she does that, do you guys have any questions about the program in general or anything we've talked about so far? Okay. Um, the reason why we tell you guys to do those fundamentals practice questions so much is because those tests are going to be unlike anything you've seen before. It's going to be what's the best answer out of all these right answers. So you guys just like really have to know your stuff. That's it. Yeah, so there's a, there's a funny saying, nursing school, where all the answers are right, but you're still wrong. <laughs> and so you're used to taking tests where there's a right answer. And so one of the really bad habits you can get into is as soon as you see what you think is a right answer, you click it and you move on. 
Um, you guys will also be taking your tests online because at the end of your time here, you'll be taking the NCLEX, which is an online test. So we want to get you as used to that as possible. In some of you, that's going to be a really big change. So and partly because when you click next question, you can't go back to the previous question. So when you see what looks like a right answer, what do you do? You say, oh, that might be a right answer. And then you read the next one. You're like, oh, that one looks really good too. There's like three right answers in this question. So now you have to ask, how would I decide which of those three right answers is the best answer in this case? Does that make sense? And what's really interesting is those three right answers, if you just change one little piece of information, a different one of them might become the better answer. So you really, you, you can't say, oh, I've seen this question before on a quiz, so I know it's this. Because if you change one or two things in, about the patient, now a different one becomes the right answer. Does that make sense? So as you're studying, it's not just what's the right answer on this question, it's why was it the right answer. Does that make sense? All right. Okay, Taylor. Thanks, Dan. Okay, as Dr. Heyman said, my name is Taylor Bartz, and I have the fun job of doing all the compliance stuff. Um, have you all received an email from me already? Has anyone not? Just raise your hand. Okay, if you haven't, after this, just come see me, and I'll make sure I get you in the system, because I probably just don't have your contact. Um, so just give me a minute. I'm going to set up my presentation. Keep eating, okay? <laughs> I promise no one's listening to you chomp your chips. Okay, guys, we're going to go ahead and get started. Okay, so as you can see from your handout, I will be talking about Complio. So I believe you have all started getting registered and signed up, which is great. If you haven't and you're hopelessly confused, not to fear, I'm going to give you like a 10 minute rundown. It's going to be super quick. Um, so what is Complio? Complio is an online tracking system selected by PBA to host details and documentation proving your compliance with immunizations and other requirements. What does that mean? Um, you have to submit documents like shot immunization forms, CPR certification, online quizzes to Complio to be compliant with our nursing school. So after you upload and submit your documents, the system reviews it, and they either accept it or reject it. I'll get into that at the end, why your documents are rejected, um, to see if it's valid or not. And you need to be 100% compliant in order to attend any clinical rotations. And I will be the meanie <laughs> that prevents you from going if you are not compliant. Um, so important to know before we begin, so this is the URL for Complio. It is also on the top of your handout. What I would highly recommend is after you've signed in the first time, just bookmark it because I promise you, you'll try to go to complio.com and it's not. It's pbauniversity.complio. So make sure you bookmark that. Um, and then when you first sign up, which I think you have already done, um, there'll be an option for a BSN in-state bundle or an out-of-state bundle. And this only has to do with where you're getting your fingerprints rolled. So even if you're from Maryland, but you're here and you're getting your fingerprints rolled here, you're going to choose the in-state bundle. Um, I think the out-of-state one is a little more expensive, like a couple bucks or something, but it's not that big of a deal. Um, you do have to pay for this package. It's about $125, but the good thing is it'll cover the whole time you're in the program. Um, and then if you're freshman direct, you may also have to buy a $10 tracker. But if you have other questions about that, you can come to my office at any time. Um, okay, after you buy the package, be sure to do your drug screening and your fingerprints within the 30-day span they give you. Otherwise, you'll have to pay another $39, which is no fun. So make sure you do that as soon as you sign up for your um, Complio profile. And then when you are creating your profile, uh, make sure you fill out everything completely. If you've already done it, you can actually go to your Complio home screen and just go to your profile tab and just edit it. Um, I suggest for you guys to put your PBA email because then everything school related is going to that same email and it's not getting lost in your personal stuff. Um, so yeah. Okay, so this is an example of me filling out. I made a test account, um, but I wanted to highlight something when you're filling out your profile. Um, if you have an alias, which is a different name that you go by, so if your name's Elizabeth and you go by Liz and that might be on some of your documents and your forms, you have to put it in here. It says, I have an alias. You just check the box and then you type that in. Because otherwise, if you go by Liz and you didn't put that in here and it says that on your forms, 
like Complia will kick you out of the system and I don't even know how to get you back in. <laughs> so just make sure you put any other last names if you have a maiden name or any other first names you have. Um, let's see. Okay. So this is when I first log in with my account. This fun screen pops up and it tells me everything I'm not compliant in. And it looks like a lot, but don't worry, like half of it, or I guess a few of it, like the items, Complia will pull in for you, like your drug screening, you don't have to worry about that. But you will have to go and find some of these other ones from your healthcare providers, you'll have to get your shots. So it seems like a lot, but if you break it up, we'll get it done and you'll get compliant eventually. So this is the main screen. Again, it just shows you all of the categories you need to be compliant in. And then, as I said earlier, that edit profile is on the left. So if you want to go in and change anything that I just mentioned, you can go ahead and do that. Does anyone have any questions so far? No? OK. Uploading a document, so practical. Um, there are a couple different ways to do this. The first method is easier if you're only submitting one document. So we're going to go ahead and pretend like we're going to submit that first one, the photo release recording form. So all you do is click on it. And then um, exactly what you need to submit pops up. So are we all 18 or older? Or is anyone younger? No? OK. So it doesn't really matter. But since we're all 18, we'll click that second one. And then the form pops up. And then all you need to do is print it. Oh, every form you submit needs to have handwritten signatures. So you can't submit anything with like an electronic word like um, signature. Everything has to be printed and hand signed. Um, but the exact form comes up, and all you need to do is print it out, sign it, do whatever it says. And then on your um, form, I put an app. It's called Cam Scanner, if you want to write it down or highlight it, whatever. It's an app that converts your documents to PDFs. So all you do is take a picture of it after you've signed it. It converts it to a PDF. And then it makes my life so much easier because I can um, print it out if I need to prove anything to our partners. It's just, it, it's nice. So Cam Scanner is a great app, and it's free. Um, so once you go back to that screen, you simply either drag the file or you click the nice browse button, and you upload it. And that's that. But um, what's important to note here when you get to this screen is that you're going to have to put in everything they ask you. So if they ask you for a date, just put today's date. If they ask you for the name of the doctor, put the doctor. Otherwise, I promise you, your document will get rejected. And then it's going to be sad. And you're going to have to redo it. So um, just make sure you fill in all the boxes. OK. Um, so once you have scrolled down on that screen and you click Submit, it's going to pop you back to your home page. And then what you're going to see is that yellow pending exclamation point there. And this just means that the system has to check it. Um, sometimes it's me going in and accepting or rejecting it. And sometimes it's Complio. And they have a whole team of people that does that. Um, so your job is to make sure when you come back two days later, it's a green check. And if you come back and it's a red X, then Complio or myself will have written notes that tells you why it was rejected, and you'll have to resubmit it. Um, so make sure that you know that that just means it's pending and it's not approved yet. OK, so does anyone have questions about that first way? It's pretty self-explanatory. Yeah? I was putting in the ones for the shots, but I put in the date that I got the shot. And I was the yeah, yeah, yeah. So if it. You kind of have to see what it's asking, because some of them do ask the day you're submitting it. But if it's like a shot form, then go ahead and put the date you got the shot, because then it'll use that date to tell you when it's going to expire the next year or whenever it expires. So yeah, that's a good question. Thanks. Uh -huh. Yeah. Um, for me, I have like, all my shots on like, one like, paper. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's perfect if you have the same. Um, the same shots on one form, just go ahead and like label that, label which ones are on that form so you know yourself, and then just upload that form everywhere it asks for that. Because I know a lot of us have like records from when we're younger. Um, <coughs> yeah, good question. Mm -hmm. Is there a specific form for each? Because I know like, I have all my shots, but I don't have any forms, like any proof that my doctor told me that I have. Yeah. So,
Yeah, so it's like the one I showed, the photo release, it told you exactly what to do and it had the form, but the shots, like the shot forms and things like that are just gonna be from your provider. Um, it could be from all different doctors, depending on where you went as a kid or um, where you're going to get your shots now. So you'll just upload whatever you have and then we'll tell you if it's good. Yeah. Like yeah. Like, yeah. So the time frame for each one um, is different. So you'll just have to go in and see. Um, they'll give you the requirements on there on Complio. So it'll tell you it, like, oh, you, this needs to have been done within the last ten years, or this needs to be in the last year. Like CPR is something you need to have every two years. So it'll tell you for each requirement the time frame and how often and how, like, how often you need to get, yeah. Um, it depends. You, yes, I think the doctors will normally. Do you have a document that your doctor hasn't signed or? A lot, a lot of my stuff is like fine. Okay. That should be okay, um, as long as you're putting like, the name of the doctor when you're submitting it. That's really what they care about. Oh, but you remind me, side note, if you don't know the name of your doctor, you can literally type in the word unknown, and that's great. As long as Complio sees that you filled in the blank. So if you're like, I don't know who did this, and you can't read their signature, just put unknown. But yeah, you should be fine. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, you should be okay. If you want to send me an email, I can go in and make sure. But you should be fine because it should last the whole time you're in the program. As long as you did it within the 30 days and it got approved and everything, you should be fine. Okay, anyone else? Yeah. So most of my immunization records don't have dates on them. Um, I was told by the health department that, I don't know if you saw that message. I did. <laughs> they, they told me that it was in the transition doctors weren't required to input dates and information, so I don't have a way to track this down. Okay, um, I will contact Complio since that's a more complex issue, um, and I'll let you know. If you can just send me an email and remind me so I have your info and everything. So yeah, that's a good point though. If anyone has any specific things, you can always just shoot me an email and I'll look into it for you. Mm -hmm. Okay. So this is the second method to upload a document. So this is um, beneficial if you have more than one, you're just trying to upload a bunch at one time. You're gonna click that upload documents in the top right. And then you're gonna get to this screen and you use the browse button and you upload um, your documents. And then once you upload it here, you'll see a description bar that comes up. Um, so this bar is most important for you, actually, not Complio this time. So this is you naming your form. If you're trying to submit your flu form, then name it flu form or flu shot form, whatever you want to call it, because then this doesn't automatically submit it for you. You still have to go back to your home screen and submit the correct document. So if you don't name it, Complio will give it a name, and it's just a bunch of letters and numbers that are gibberish. So actually putting a description of what you're submitting is very helpful for you. <laughs> um, yeah. Okay, so I've put two here, I've named them, and then you just go ahead and click Upload All. And now, like I said, we're gonna jump back to our home screen and actually go in and submit those documents. So I'm showing you the flu one now because see how it has different boxes this time? You'll have to fill in all the boxes. Um, several, several, several of you will ask me about the lot number. So every flu shot you get, you have to have a lot number on the document. The same document needs to have your first and last name, your doctor, your pharmacy. If you got it at CVS, it has to say that, and the lot number. It's just like a six digit number. I don't personally know what it is because I'm not a nurse, <laughs> um, but your doctor will. So if you're leaving after you got your flu shot and they didn't have a lot number on there, make sure you ask them before you leave because it will get rejected. And I've had students who've had to go back to the pharmacy to get the lot number written on there. Um, so it'll save you a lot of time if you just make sure before you leave that you get that number. So then you scroll down and you click submit. Oh, there's that name of the person administering. Just you can put unknown if you need to. 
So then you'll repeat these steps for each document. Um, as we were saying, some will be harder to obtain than others. You'll have to reach out to your provider, um, but Complio will tell you exactly what you need to provide. Um, and then make sure you're coming back two days later to make sure that it was accepted. So common reasons why your document may be rejected. If you hadn't heard anything I've said, this is probably the most important slide, so please listen. Um, your document will be rejected if it's expired. So if you're trying to turn in a flu shot from last year, they know. So um, if it's expired, if there's no lot number or doctor name, if your document is blurry, like if you submit it and you can't even read it, we can't read it either. So just make sure you use that cam scanner app or you're just taking a clear picture of it. Um, and if your name and date isn't found on the document, it may also be rejected. Um, so I put on your handout Complio's number. We're really trying to emphasize that you guys should call them first if it's not a PBA nursing specific question. Um, but if you've called them and they're not helping, you can always come see me in my office. Um, I'm right there. Or you can send me an email or call me, whatever you want to do. Um, I will always be there to help you. Um, if you are compliant, you can still fall out of compliance. So even if you've been compliant for the past year, chances are there are probably at least three or four things that will have expired because the year is over. So make sure you are staying on top of it. Check your emails often. Complio is also called American Data Bank. So if you've seen emails from them and you're like, who is this? It's Complio. Um, be aware of deadlines. I will send you deadlines that if you aren't compliant by, then we will not allow you to go to clinicals. And we'll have to um, give you a grade penalty in some cases. It's 5%, and it's in your handbook. So that's not fun. I don't like to do that. Um, and yeah, if you stay on top of everything, you will be fine. This is not meant to scare you. It's just like we've realized that these presentations really help because Complio is kind of not that intuitive when you log in. You're like, what is this? So I hope this has been helpful to you. Um, Question, yeah. Number, is that for specifically the flu shot? Or? Yeah, specifically the flu shot. I haven't found it to be anywhere else yet, I don't think. Um, but I know it is on the flu shot, so just make sure. Mm-hmm. Anyone else have any questions? Oh, we're good. Okay, so just shoot me an email or let me know if you need anything, and I will be sure to help you. Thank you, guys. At this time, do you guys have any additional questions? I think Nancy has one thing she wants to tell you guys before we're done here. Oh. Scrubs, that's what we're doing now, uniforms. Yeah. All right. OK, scrubs, the exciting, the best part of the day, right? Um, we did have a nice setup back there for you to look at scrubs, but you're, there's so many of you, we had to move it around. Once you get up, I'll, I'll lay them out again. You can take a look at them. Basically, we use one supplier for our scrubs. It's Medware. They have two locations in the area, one right down southern, um, right before you get to four, uh, State Road 7. There's a big Dick Sporting Good and Kohl's. Um, the Medware is right in there. Or there's one in Boynton Beach on Gateway. So this is the only supplier we use because they embroider them and all that good stuff. There's quite a few different styles for you ladies to choose from. Guys, I think you have about two styles. <laughs> um, but we recommend that you buy two sets. You need to buy one <laughs> so you can show up dressed. But you might have your clinicals back to back, and you may not feel like doing laundry that night. So you should probably get two sets. Um, the minimum you need is the top and the bottom, of course. We recommend you buy an uh, approved undershirt, which is like a black long sleeve undershirt that they have at Medwear too, because hospitals tend to be pretty cold. Uh, we also have some, two black jackets. That's optional, but you can; those are approved to wear with your scrubs at the hospital. Um, and you'll need a lab coat. Um, there's not much difference in lab coats, but you can take a look. I think we have two, two styles for ladies and maybe one for guys. Um, so you'll need a lab coat, your scrubs. You'll need shoes. The shoes um, need to be a solid black, solid white, or solid gray. They can have a small like Nike logo or something, but nothing 
big and glaring. No light up soles, please. Um, and they should be leather or vinyl, I guess. You don't want mesh. You don't want anything that can absorb yucky fluids, okay? You don't want to walk around all day with that on your foot. You want it to be able to slide off and you wipe it up. <laughs> so that's the only, and ladies, comfort first rather than looks, okay? You're gonna be on your feet all day. So we get something comfortable, then the cutest of the most comfortable shoes, okay? Um, you'll need, a, a, as mentioned before, a stethoscope. Medwear has those, but you don't have to buy that at Medwear. Um, they also have the pen lights, and I guess the next semester you'll need the scissors, and they have those. Um, but again, you don't have to buy those at Medwear. You do need to order by November 30th so that they will be ready for you the second week of January, okay? Didn't I just talk about stethoscopes? You weren't paying attention. <laughs> Dr. Heyman. <laughs> no. Um, so you'll, you will be needing to pick up your own stethoscope before, before that. Uh, she mentioned she would, on the flyer, I think that she would deliver the scrubs. We may just have you pick them up. We haven't decided about that because we don't, we'll, we'll figure that out. But you do have to get them ordered by November 30th in order to have them in a timely manner, okay? Uh, this, when we lay them out in a few minutes, if you have time to hang around, you'll see that each piece is about $25, so one set will be around $50, something like that. Any other, I don't, questions? I'll check on that. It seems like it should be okay, but I'm not positive, so. Any other questions about scrubs? Is there like a specific brand that people use their own shoes? Like I've been airing I've seen all sorts. So if you see anybody running around in their scrubs, ask them if they like their shoes and what they are. <laughs> yes, ma'am. Yes, the lab coat has to be medwear too because it gets embroidered. So, has anybody thought of any questions for our students? They're hanging in the back. I just wanted to ask her again. Okay, come see me after. Okay. Okay. Um, no, no questions for our students that were here. They're kind of been hanging around just in case you came up with questions. No questions about anything? So we don't need scissors for next semester? She, no. Okay. If you order the stethoscope, there will also be like a leather something to No, you're going to probably need your stethoscope. I'm sorry, I'm not repeating these questions. I don't know if they're being heard on the video. Um, you will need your stethoscope the first day. So get your stethoscope, don't wait for it to be delivered. You can actually order those online and it can be delivered to you that way, um, but be sure you come the first day with um, your stethoscope if you have fundamentals or health assessment your first day of class. Yes? I really don't need scissors, right? <laughs> Should I stand up too? Oh, okay. Um, I know we don't need, si I'll hold it, I got it. I, got it. <laughs> I know we don't need scissors right away, but do they have to be trauma shears? Is that what they are? Or? There's a picture of them that we'll put out back here. They're okay. the little bent ones. Okay. Thanks, everyone. <laughs> <laughs> yes, ma'am. Uh, I, um, I know you said that we don't start clinicals in the actual hospital. First, you do um, first in here. When in the semester do you start going out to the hospitals? You'll go uh, right after midterm. You'll start. Okay? So you've got that. Yay, not only is it midterm, but something fun starts. <laughs> Brenna. Um, I know you said that we don't need to get our stethoscope from Medware. Is there a specific brand stethoscope you recommend? <laughs> okay, so um, you can get any stethoscope you like. We generally recommend the Litman II. Um, you can also, there's another brand that called MDF, and some people prefer them. They claim that they're as good as the Litman, but cheaper. 
personally, I disagree, but I know other faculty who think that's true. So the best recommendation I would have is um, go to a place where they'll actually let you listen to, through them and then make a choice on what you hear best through. Also, the different earpieces can make a dramatic difference. So when you get your stethoscope, sometimes they come with two or three different earpieces. Try them with all the different earpieces because sometimes your ears are just shaped so that they don't work with the default ones, but they work really well with a different one. So there you go. Um, if your parents really want to go all out for you, I would recommend getting the Lippmann Cardiology 3. Getting more expensive than that, not really worth it. That was sent out by Nancy, said Lippman 3, so is it Lippman okay. 2 or 3? So, you're right. Lippman changed their lineup, and we don't really like the 2 as much, sorry. If you get an old one, okay, but yeah. So yeah, Cardiology 3 is probably, like, that's the one that I have, and that's the one I'd recommend, personally, but it's a little bit more expensive. Eventually, but not at first. So, because they're not, you're not going to have your scrubs for the very first week of clinical. So they'll let you know like what day you actually need to start wearing your scrubs. Well, on that same note, since we're going to have a dedicated clinical day, what does that look like in terms of scheduling for us? Can we have the day open with the classes for clinical? Yes. What are our options? Yes. So you're going to have one clinical day that is, you're going to have clinicals from about seven in the morning, and now. Just because it says you start at 7, you might need to arrive at the facility at 6.45 or even 6.30. And then it will go for 7 hours. So from whatever it starts, it will go for 7 hours. So 7 to 2 or 6.30 to 1.30. And then it, sometimes you might be a little bit later. So it might start at 8 and go to 3. So that day is pretty much shot for anything else. Unless you have like an evening class you want to try and take at 6 o'clock in the afternoon. I believe it's going to be assigned at this moment in time. Um, if that changes, we will let you know. Okay, if you if you're a transfer, um, we have a transfer advisor who will pick the courses that you need and put you in those. And her, she's just sitting at the back of the class. Her name is Kathy Stoffer. So. Yeah, if you're a transfer, you don't need to worry about anything. If you are a currently enrolled student, you are responsible for enrolling yourself in the classes that you should be enrolled in. Okay, so you, if you are a currently enrolled transfer, you're still responsible for enrolling yourself in all the classes you need. If you are transferring in and you've not yet been here, then Kathy will enroll you. All right, did I answer everyone's questions? <laughs> yes. Yes. The stethoscope can be any color. Um, one thing that some, in some places when you order it, you can get it engraved with your name. I would highly recommend that, especially if you buy a Lippmann, because Lippmanns have a tendency to walk away in hospitals. That's not mine. Yes, it is. It's got my name in it. Oh. Yeah. So. All right. Any other questions? One more thing. And those of you that are watching the video, we're sorry that we didn't get all the questions on the tape, perhaps, but maybe you can figure out from the answer what the question was. Um, I will be emailing everyone a link to Medware. You don't have to go to the store. Um, there is a link, and it has just the PBA scrubs, so you, you go right to the PBA shopping page. You can order it all online um, if you don't want to go try it on. If you want to go try it on, you need to obviously go to the store. Okay. Any other questions? Don't hesitate to contact me for anything non complio um, before you get going. Oh, Natalie or Kathy, did you want to say anything? Thank you 
So I'm Natalie over in admissions. If you're a brand new transfer, if you've transferred in the last year and a half, we know each other quite well. Uh, but looking around this room, there are a lot of people that have been here since freshman. Maybe you transferred in a couple semesters ago. Maybe this is going to be your first semester. So for those of you that have already been here at PBA, you are an established PBA student. You know what's going on around campus. You know chapel. You know things that are happening, things you need to do. So. You guys are all in an even playing field as far as this is your first semester of nursing school, but for a handful of you, this is going to be their first semester at PVA, period. So please be welcoming to them, be friendly, encourage them, and answer any questions they may have about PVA in general. Um, they're excited to be here. Um, I've been working with a lot of them, you know, maybe last semester, and now this semester as well. Um, so for those of you that are transferring this semester, if we have not connected about financial aid, let's be sure to do that. Um, if we've talked on the phone and we've never met face to face, please say hello before you leave today. Um, other than that, I'm excited for all of you to get started, and I look forward to maybe all of you being my nurse here in Palm Beach County in two and a half years. <laughs> I'm Kathy Stauffer, and I am the transfer advisor. I have a much longer title, but we'll just stick with that. So if you are brand new to PBA, like Natalie said, I will connect with you as well. Please be aware that in the spring, you probably will want to take in addition to, because how many credits are your nursing courses? Just Oh, they are 12. So they could maybe fit one uh, exploring the Bible or freedom in. It majority. Oh, you do have it in there, okay. So the majority of you uh, should have your AA degree, and so you could take Exploring the Bible, which is a required PBA course, and there's two others, but we'll work those in down the road. So I just wanna connect with you on what time you might want that, according to availability, you know, and see what we can do. And I think that's it. If you do not have a previous bachelor's degree, you are required to do chapel, which is 12 credits per semester, workshop, which is 45 hours for the year. If you have a prior bachelor's, you might want to double check with the chapel office and with the um, workshop office to make sure they know that, and then you're not required to do those things. Um, for workshop, work over the summer is applicable to you can bank your hours ahead so doing your volunteer tier hours over the summer can be a good thing if you want to be sure you have all the time to dedicate to study yes ma'am i've been doing workshop recently and um i just was kind of confused like i have like i think over 30. do i have to do 23 each semester or can i do like 45 before the full semester is we're starting in the spring, I think it's September 1st. For October 1st. Anything you've done from October 1st. Right. Yeah, and it's and it's per year, not per semester for workshop. Chapels are by semester. So one thing we highly recommend for all of you doing workshop is that you do it in something that is related to nursing or healthcare or something you might be interested in after you graduate. So say for example, you want to be a pediatric nurse. Do your workshop something related to children because that is going to be valuable experience when you go for your job interview than if you're just doing highway cleanup projects or something like that. Um, if you think you might want to be a uh, neonatal nurse, well, you can volunteer at a nurse in an ICU and that would be valuable experience. And since all of you are in a nursing program, anything you do that's healthcare related would be helpful in terms of getting a job interview later. Yes, you can, you can do them ahead of time. Okay, so you can volunteer at any nonprofit organization or school. Now, when it comes to hospitals, even if it's a for-profit hospital, because right now there's only two or one nonprofit hospital left in this county, sorry, two. Um, a lot of them will have volunteer nurse corps or some sort of volunteer organization within the hospital that you can still volunteer for. So you're not volunteering for the hospital, you're volunteering for the volunteer program at the hospital, and that'll be nonprofit. So you just have to make sure that you've got that 
before you before you get your hours signed off. All right. On that note, I think we're going to be done. So I'll be hanging out a little bit afterwards. If you have any additional questions, you can feel free to ask. And we'll set up the scrubs back here so you can take a look at them. Thanks for coming.